All right, thanks everybody. I have a lot of content to cover today, so I'm gonna to stick to the podium if that's all right. Um, so as, as Todd said, my name is David Brudnell. And so in addition to being a seeker of new research technologies and an entrepreneur, I'm the EVP of Pure Profile, and we're focused on de delivering large scale omni-channel brand solutions to, to our clients. So, but enough about Pure Profile, that's not what I'm here to speak about today. So I've been tasked by Lenny and the team at IIEX to speak about a topic that I believe is one of the most important today, and that's perspective. So having perspective is a pow powerful attribute for any business person, but um, given what we've heard over the last few days here at IIEX, it's apparent that technology and new methodologies are having profound impacts on how market research fits into the overall business picture. And having perspective on market research and how it's perceived in other divisions has been instrumental in, in my success at Pure Profile, but it's also a critical area that, we've, that I focus on with uh, C2 Ventures. So, and that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Now, I know we've been talking about the transformation of market research and the point to death, but today I'm gonna to try and convince you and persuade you by taking you through market research through the eyes of the CMO. So, today's topic is why, the only W left for research. Now, before I begin, uh, I'm gonna take you through the ending. So, in the following 16 slides, I'm going to, one, show you that because of the massive proliferation of online inventory and connected devices, CMOs have got smart very fast. I'm gonna give you real examples of some research technology and data providers and that you probably never heard of, but are grabbing big research dollars that are hidden in marketing budgets. And finally, round out our journey through the W's and show you how researchers have the requisite skills to kind of, to really pull everything together. So, fact one, contrary to popular belief, uh, marketers are not like Don Draper. In fact, CMOs have been rapidly ascending the budgetary ladder uh, and last week, Laura McClellan from Gartner released a report where she made the prediction that in only five years' time, CMOs will outspend their counterpart CIOs. So McClellan goes on to provide further evidence that of the changing budgetary power between marketing and technology. But what's astounding about this report by a vetted and respected company is that it paints a picture of the CMO of one who is not surrounded by creative types and thinking about soft, squishy stuff but rather that the CMO today is one who is technically savvy, understands the potential impact of research, modeling, data, validation, and many other common terms and processes used by market researchers. So drawing parallels to the Moneyball scenario where Billy Bean took the Oakland Athletics and took them from a scout-led organization to one that was grounded in statistics, really CMOs are thinking differently about marketing these days. And I think the airline CMO said it best, and I'm paraphrasing here, so in the 21st century, marketing success comes from data and the technology that powers it. And a quick, quick note, I chose a slide of Jonah Hill here rather than Brad Pitt, because I knew I would have probably lost all of you. But um, now for all of those uh, of you out there thinking kind of who is this Canadian and what is he talking about linking CMOs to research? Well, I have another dose of perspective for you. So in a very recent biannual study, conducted by Duke University to about 500 CMOs of Fortune, Fortune 1000 companies, an overwhelming 76% said that marketing leads marketing research activities. And as you can see, over the past couple years, except for February 2012, this responsibility has been growing. So there's no denying it. CMOs are data savvy, and they're controlling our budgets. Okay? But I promise it's not all slave master. But before I take you through to the light at the end of the tunnel, I want to take you through an educational journey on the five W's. Our first W is who, and for the marketer, who is really understanding the consumer. So to begin with, marketers are way beyond Nielsen Cantina or Experian Data. They are connected to DMPs and the deep web. So DMPs, or data management platforms, are defined by Forrester as a unified technology platform that intakes disparate first, second, and third party data, provides normalization and segmentation on that data, and allows the user to push the resulting segmentation into live interactive channel environments. Sound a bit like research? Well, except that companies like Blue Kai, DemandX, and others are doing the segmentation in real time for marketers, running billions, with a B, of in-flight calculations to optimize campaign segmentation, and here's the key, against reportable ROI targets. So now the second area of rapid innovation in the WHO segment is really what's called the deep web. So the deep web was created as a result of Google really not being that great at really indexing people. 
And the deep web is the underlying content, so it's the pictures, the documents that are associated with you that general web crawlers actually can't get to. And it's estimated that the deep web is about 500 times that of the surface web. So in this segment, it's a bit like the wild, wild west at the moment in terms of data, its ownership, and consumer privacy. But you know, we'll, we'll leave that for another presentation. But companies like Rapleaf claim to cover and offer access to over 80% of the email addresses in the United States. So, and this comes from experience. With a junior tech resource and a DMP, a chief marketing officer can almost instantly acquire data that would take weeks or months to compile using traditional techniques. And probably you couldn't afford to do it using traditional techniques. So today in real time, marketing technology is, as our tech boys in Pure Profile like to say, automatically making ROI-based decisions on look-alike, share-alike, shop-alike, convert-alike, and a heap of other um, market attribute data, data points for consumers. So the second W is what? What content to deliver to the consumer? So similar to data management platforms, CMOs have got creative smart by actually implementing what are called dynamic creative optimization platforms. And companies like Creative and DG, there's a lot of acronyms, I'm trying to get them all right. There's a lot of uh, collective and DG's media mind solutions make real-time adjustments to creative at the attribute level. So marketers no longer struggle on choosing one or two messages or creative executions for a campaign. They just take them all. They break them down into their attribute parts and then let big databases munge and optimize ad units to individual customers. So a good friend of mine, she's a CEO of, a, of an ad buying, uh, ad buying company, and they back end a lot of the ad buying for the, uh, the companies in Midtown. So she used DCOs and provided me with this great quote. So by using dynamic creative optimization for my clients, we can take one piece of creative and through our engines split this into 500 variants and deliver across multiple platforms. This is done quickly by the traffic teams and not only does this tech make real-time optimizations of the creative units customized at the local store level, but alerts us to high ROI opportunities in flight so we can maximize yields for our clients. So not only is this technology breaking creative ad units into their individual attribute parts, it's actually saying this person is on this device in this location, and they're converting at a really great rate. Send more money to this, because you're actually selling good product. So the new W, where? So has been getting a lot of the coverage in the industry over, out of the lot. And out of the focus areas today, I believe that mo mobile is probably still the least understood of the future opportunities, and it really lacks ideas when it comes to engaging consumers. Excuse me. And just last week, I attended the ARF measurement conference in Gale, I see that you're here. Um, and there was numerous case studies uh, that painted a picture of how current advertising and engagement models on mobile still aren't connecting to consumers in a deep way. But that's not deterring CMOs, who expect that the mobile marketing industry will eclipse the $5 billion mark domestically in, by 2015. And Scott Forche from Aquity Group reported recently, and I quote, a lot of brands have spent far too much money on mobile applications, and of the $2.6 billion spent in mobile in 2012, most of it was wasted. So with a world where there are more mobile phones and people, companies like Raw Data, Reality Mine, and Place are doing some really amazing stuff around consumer engagement and also reporting. Uh, Place is a really good example of a company who's using opt-in location data from a consumer panel of, I think it's around 70,000 Americans, to better deliver data and vis-a-vis -vis insight to marketers. So the big learning is that CMOs have had is that the consumer's mobile is not, is not a shrunken desktop. Consumers rather need timely information to drive them to stores and to produce positive purchase intent. Oh, it's important, it's not working. Um, so here's a good example from an ad unit from BN2. So you can see the ad unit, um, if you can call it that, offers amenity, direction, and serendipity to the user. What's also really exciting is that there's a huge amount of primary, secondary, and tertiary data that's coming from this ad unit. I've tried to put a little bit up here, but device, carrier, user, profile, geolocation, geo metadata. And you can also integrate technology into the till at the store to have the salesperson ask the consumer uh, questions to give some more context to that particular engagement. So opportunity here is that CMOs don't know what data is priority. Now, when is our next big W? A bit of a spoiler alert, this is my one all allotted peer profile plug, uh, is uh, when. And the state of technology today, when, from a data perspective, becomes extremely sexy. And I believe Google owned and coined the term zero moment of truth. And really, it refers to being there at the right time for the customer at the, at the point of purchase. So 
CMOs have been recognizing that with omni-channel access, consumer access to their products and services, it's created this new path to purchase. And it's important to be able to collect the right data at this vital moment. So in addition to enterprise service providers like IBM, who purchased Unica, I think for about $500 million in 2011, I'm happy to announce that Pure Profile is engaged in a strategic partnership with Quidco. Now what's interesting about Quidco is they transacted just about a billion, billion pounds of products and services last year from about 3,500 merchants. And with this, with this partnership, Pure Profile can bring zero moment of truth targeting to market researchers and marketers to append transactional data with survey data, with behavioral data, and a heap of other stuff. So in the last eight minutes, I've taken you through the who, what, where, and when that CMOs, I believe, own when it comes to research and data. And, but as, as I promised, however, at the beginning of the presentation, I'm going to show you that it's at the why, which is still the last one left, but thankfully it's the most important one which really is up for grabs by researchers, and that you guys have the requisite skills to actually pull everything together. So we've seen that CMOs are working with some big, sophisticated, and fast technology that produces big data and automatically does segmentation, regression analyses, cross-tabulation, and a bunch of the other, you know, let's just call them process-oriented parts of market service delivery. But what CMOs struggle with, and I evidence again this firsthand at the ARF measurement conference, is actually how to bring them all together. People today are consuming content and engaging with brands omni-channel. And CMOs don't have the measurement and the resulting strategy to actually build these omni-channel campaigns and deliver them back to consumers. Case in point. So in the CMO study conducted by Duke University, you know, that I referenced earlier. So we all know that social is big, and we all know that social spending is expected to double in the next five years. I think it's going to be about between 20 and 30 percent of marketing budgets overall by 2015. But CMOs feel overwhelmingly underprepared when it comes to how this growing and important channel is integrated into their overall strategy. So according to the study, only 10 percent of CMOs actually feel content of their integration into social into their overall marketing strategy. So, and as further proof, when I was reviewing the literature for this presentation, I came across this really, this beauty of a table. This table comes from a question where CMOs were asked to rate the influence of particular social metrics on their importance in the organization. Now, don't focus too much on the actual numbers. What I want you to take a look at is the red and green boxes, which represent a positive or negative change in the influence within these organizations. So, do you guys notice it? Every box has changed, every single one, and some by more than 100%. So one could argue that social started with Friendster in 2002, and Facebook obviously came online in early 2005. But that still leaves a nine-year period where CMOs are still struggle to understand what metrics are important to their overall marketing strategy and how to actually show their success internally. So with the previous examples, the CMO picture that I'm trying to paint is one of a person who is highly data and research savvy with a lot of options. But all the gains that CMOs have gotten from these market research from these technology providers are marginal. They're very niche focused. A, a marketer needs a listening tool for social. They need a measurement tool for mobile. And what's happening is that they're getting really good and really narrow capabilities. What, what they lack is something, someone and something to bring it all together and to combine all of these really niche activities into a holistic picture to help them with their marketing strategy. And Really, CMOs need talent who can answer this why. Why people consume and engage content differently across different devices and how these data actually fit together. And CMOs are desperate for, we can call them guides, we can call them Sherpas, really someone to, sit, to bring to the table and sit beside them to really take them through this new consumer path to purchase. And I believe researchers with understandings of structured and unstructured data, the ability to turn a book into a movie, as, a, as the CEO of a research firm told me in Australia, and, um, and really bring to the table that holistic insight to be able to look across channel. So that's it for me. Um, if anyone wants a copy of this presentation or the literature that I referenced, just shoot me an email, um, and I'd be happy to provide it. And um, if anyone has any questions, fire away. Thanks so much, David. We do have, look, we've got 30 seconds left here. Do we have a question in the audience, maybe two? Back in this corner, do we have a microphone? You can yell. <laughs> I think we do want to record this. So bear with us just a second. One of your premises was that your CMO is into math. 
what ha into into measurement, into analysis, and he cares for tools and solutions like the ones you're offering. Mm -hmm. What is the what is your answer to those situations where your CMO is more into touchy feely things and doesn't really believe kind of the measurement discipline in the first place? Well, short answer: I probably believe they're going to be out of a job in the next <laughs> couple of years. Uh, but but really, I mean. I think I'm kind of preaching to the choir. You know, data is power, and it's about bringing that that data to to the CMO to actually help educate them. But but I think I mean, hopefully, the point I was trying to bring across is that, you know, CMOs are pretty smart. I think the the person who you mentioned may be the exception rather than the rule today. David, thanks for joining us yeah, today. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Come back.